So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to jump into a free flight here um, so I can show you some of the dynamics of the game, some of the ways it controls. Um, then we're going to take a look at some of the story mode, um, a little bit of how that, that evolves. Um, I know early on it's a bunch of kind of flying matches and what I really want you to see is uh, the online play. Um, I just briefly got uh, a touch of the online play and it's uh, something that really impressed me so I want to uh, be able to, to show you guys kind of an in-depth look at uh, what's going on with the online play here so I'm going to strap it in and uh, we're going to kind of get going here. And we're going to take a look at free flight. So this is the flying mode of the game. There's just the free flight mode. Um, so as you can tell, um, the, the direction you're flying is directly influenced by the tilt of your head. Um, so if you tilt up, you're flying up, right? Tilt down, you're gonna fly down. Tilt over here to the right, you're gonna make a nice sweeping turn to the right. Um, and um, something I've noticed early on that's kind of a, a blocker for me is um, a little bit of this effect of when you're tilting, you can see there on the left side of the screen that it kind of blocks the peripheral vision. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that's about. I assume uh, it's either them trying to compensate for uh, lack of vision when flying in tight spaces or uh, maybe some kind of drawback from hardware of this of this type. So that's uh, one of the only only negatives I've found from from the flight system. Uh, you can look around, but that and that won't influence the direction you're flying as much as tilt, right? So if you actually have wings, you'd be flying where you're, where you're looking, which is, it takes a minute to get used to, um, but it's, it's something that, that, it's something for me that is really kind of unbelievable. Um, I love the ability to fly around, uh, games. Uh, that's why I'm a big fan of the wingsuit uh, mechanic in Just Cause. Uh, I, was, uh, I love the mods in GTA where you can, you know, kind of have free reign over where you're flying. And I'm going to sweep down in here so you can see. Now to speed up your flight, it's a right, you hold the right trigger and that speeds you up. Slow down, uh, you're going to hit the left trigger, right? So it's almost like the, the racing game mechanic where the left triggers break and the right triggers <coughs> to accelerate, excuse me. Um, so yeah, I'll just give you uh, a bit more of the mechanics here on, on what it's like to fly around. Uh, some of the landmarks of Paris, obviously the Eiffel Tower. It's kind of a beacon in this game. Uh, we'll fly over there real quick and uh, I'm check out what's going on over there. I've, I've, through my early experiences with this, uh, I, I'm, I'm personally a, a snowboarder myself, so in snowboarding you always want to stay on an edge, right? So in this game I've found that you kind of want to, to stay in, in your turns, because if you're flying straight, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, quickly overcompensate. So if you're kind of just cruising, it's, it's easy to make quicker adjustments on the fly, right? Um, so let's keep heading to the tower so I can kind of show you guys how tight are the spaces you can fly through here, right? So you can get in, you can get in pretty tight, right? And it's, an, it's really a kind of a liberating sense of freedom. Um, something that I personally haven't been able to find anywhere quite like this. 
Um, from what I've been able to tell, you can't exactly land anywhere yet. Oh, looks like one of my friends here flew. Well, let me I'll try to catch up to him if I can. Fly alongside him here for a sec. So you can kind of fly as a as a squad. This is almost good practice for uh, the multiplayer, as you'll be able to see soon. Um, I can't believe he just flew me into an exhaust fan in a subway. Okay, uh, anyway, um, as you could probably guess, uh, the multiplayer in this game is of a dog, dog fighting mentality, um, and we'll see that soon enough. So we'll fly up here, let's see if we can maybe even get all the way up to the top. Make sure your neck is loose before starting this game too. I feel my neck kind of cracking a little bit. So here we are at the absolute top of the Eiffel Tower. Right. You naturally pick up speed when you dive down. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to make it through these slots here. Oh yeah, I should be able to. That's nice. Okay. So you can kind of free dive down here. stream going up the top there, right? So let's see if maybe we can get up there. So yeah, now that you guys kind of have the idea and the feel, let's jump in, maybe do a couple of the story mode uh, quick chapters and uh, then we'll jump into multiplayer and see what's going on over there. So I'm gonna have to make it back to my nest, which is acts as the main menu and has a white waypoint in the game somewhere, I think. Where's the nest? Maybe if I... Do you have to... I think you might have to crash to get back to the nest in the free, in the free fly at least. jump in here to the story mode. Uh, I'll show you guys a few of the challenges. Right, so we'll hit one of these little challenges here. As you can tell the weather is dynamic. A lot of changes as you get dropped in. I haven't re really seen any pattern. Of like every living creature, you need a safe home. Fetch feathers available in the area to improve. So to fetch the feathers from around the city to make my nest here. Uh, I personally would have liked to see uh, maybe something slightly different uh, than just the huge feathers on top of the trees for the nest building. Um, you know, I guess it, 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 
it serves its purpose, but uh, would have been nice to have uh, maybe a way to, to snatch something up, snatch up some twigs, or uh, collect some material besides just kind of random feathers. But can't really over over politic it too much. So we're just gonna fly around here, collect some feathers as the challenge, kind of one of the easier challenges. Fun challenges. Um, let's see if we can show you one of the uh, racing challenges here. It's the clock. I think it was three. Was one of them. The district's tunnels warrant exploration. The wind feels good, rushing through your feathers. How quickly can you fly through? So we're going to be flying through the subways here, hitting the jet streams. Um, get to the end, I guess uh, we all set. As you can tell, the jet streams kind of shoot you through here. Uh, not the easiest thing on the eye, I will say. Uh, it kind of works by your whips by you and it's a little, spinning around a little bit, which is you know, a little bit much, but I've gotten a bit used to it now. Alright, I'll take some wolves here. So again, these are zoo animals that have populated, repopulated the city in the absence of humans. Uh, I didn't see really what caused the humans to be done, but it seems like some kind of apocalypse or fallout from a war or whatever it may be. So, kind of move our way through. Just like, ooh. Yeah, that's a little tight for my liking there. That's not comfortable. Admittedly so. So this is definitely uh, one of the one of the queasier parts of it so far for me. That really tight close quarters flying. That's a deep breath kind of challenge. Um. One more. So it's going on here at four. Show your agility in the air. So an and let the animals here. in the area know the skies around this distance. and how to uh, really maneuver your way when you need to take a specific path somewhere, right? Um, I had some issues with this early on, nothing too crazy, but uh, I definitely had to do this a couple times to do it with the right uh, speed, right? Bright, vibrant colors, really nice. Great response. 
responsiveness, sleep control, as you kind of see here. Um, you kind of got to keep playing with the uh, to accelerate and decelerate. Especially with things like these, you're going to need to slow down a little bit. Uh, eventually, you can't always be perfect. As you can tell right there, just as I say it. So, I'll run try to run this course one time. Uh, so, you know, you guys have like, kind of a feel for the way that the early parts of this game go. Maybe run through it pretty quickly here. Okay, so now you guys have a, a feel for kind of the aesthetic, um, kind of what they have, the, the challenges they have you doing early in the game here. Um, I want to make sure I get you guys into the online modes here. Um, so we're going to head back to the nest and we're going to try to jump in a jump into an online match here because it's something that I, I didn't know anything about before when I jumped in and I was immediately very impressed by um, the direction that they've chosen to take the uh, the online multiplayer. The only match I've played has been a one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, I'm not sure there's, an, there's enough But there are enough people active. Okay, let's say I found a found somebody here to play against. Tails Fox 88. So I guess in essence your teammates would be here and his teammates would be resting over there. If it says three on three, I haven't seen multiple multiple birds uh, in a match yet. So I can't confirm the way that that is handled and um, how exactly it's that that's gone that's gone about. Um, so yep, you're in here in your nest, again, jet stream going up to up the tower over there, you have some pigeon friends. You have some nest of eggs. It's kind of spotty, because I, I, was, I was the guy who didn't know what he was doing early on. Uh, so this might be another one of those guys, because I, I have faced, you know, kind of a newbie. But, uh... So it, it's a prey-based multiplayer, right? So there's a so either like a dead rabbit, as you see here, or something along those lines. You have to fly through the area with the purple area to pick it up, and you must deliver it to the nest, the yellow nest, once you have it, right? So it's placed randomly somewhere in the map, and you have to go find it, right? So there it is, and there's my enemy there. You see him in the distance. 
do is you shoot. You have to shoot these squawks in order to knock them down. And then you have to stay out of his squawk. You have to stay out of his squawk range, or you get or you get the prey knocked out of your talons, like I did there. So now he has it, and he's taking it to the goal. And as you can see there, that's like a desperation attempt almost, right? So he he, he delivered it to the nest. So that's one nothing him. It's almost uh reminds me of the Star Fox projectile, honestly. The way it's the way it kind of shoots out like an orb almost, right? So the, if, if the prey is not taken at a certain time, then it resets to a different part of the map. So you got this cooldown here. You, you can also once there's if there's no prey in in either player's hands or talents, I should say. Then you can you can shoot down the enemy before they get there without anything in play. So it looks like he's about to take it there, right? So now you can track. Now I track him. It's been reset. You kind of want to stay low, right? Or else you can get shot down pretty much whenever. And then you have that almost five or six second cooldown period. So you kind of got to weave through the streets and be still stealthy about it. The waveform here. There he goes. Wow. That's such a chill down my spine when he went by. I thought I picked that up when I went by, but apparently I didn't. Oh man, I'm going the wrong way. Two elephants. Best one I've seen so far. The best I've personally been able to deliver. So he's cooled down. an extreme dog fighting tactics, right? Uh, it's hard to explain the intensity when you're flying with, and you know you're being tracked, right? Whoa! He shot me down before he even had it. So yeah, I haven't seen multiple players in one match yet, but I, I can only imagine it being insane. Literally insane. Alright, he's loose. Oh yeah. It's 3-1. Uh, that's gonna be a victory and that guy knew what he was doing too so I, I gotta say I feel much better now than I did at first 
um, in this multiplayer mode. But, um, yeah, it's something. Uh, it's something you almost have to experience for yourself in order to actually understand uh, the intensity of. I've never had more of a rise out of a multiplayer uh, format in any game anywhere. Uh, I'm going to be playing it a lot more. I need to know what the three player matches are like. As soon as there's enough people in these lobbies to get three player matches up, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make a new, another video about the the online play and show you guys just what kind of mayhem is going on in these matches, but uh, that's going to be it for now. Uh, I've been flying around for a little too long. Uh, uh, it's it's starting to spin on me a little bit. Um, so until I can get uh, a little further into the campaign uh, and a little uh, and some more people into these into these lobbies, uh, so we can get a, a real three three on three feel for what what's going on in these matchups. Uh, that's going to be it for now. So if you have any other recommendations on VR content you'd like to see or any specific games, um, put a comment below and we'll try to get we'll get, try to get to your guys' requests. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, this is definitely something I'd recommend checking out if you're if you're capable of doing so. Um, it, it, it exceeded my expectations and uh, it it really brought the freedom of flight. Uh, in, a, in a way that I, I didn't think I'd see for a while so uh, bravo to the creators of, of this of this game and uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, for more VR content stay tuned to shacknews.com.